Hey guys, um, I'm back. It's been a while. I've been kind of busy working on some other stuff. I had a few projects that went south on me. Um, one is, uh, I'll show you the part that I'm using for it anyway. This is a ring light that I was in the process of building and what I'm running into is some difficulties with the actual plastic that this stuff is made out of. It's a fairly hard plastic and my original intent of bonding other plastic to it just wasn't working. So I'm probably going to have to rework that project from scratch and, I don't know, maybe even build a complete custom ring light. Either way it goes, don't be surprised if you see this project coming up next. Um, it's still a work in progress, so we'll see how things go. Let's get out of the way. Hey, it didn't break it this time. Um, the other thing that I've been working on has been, and you can't really see it in the shot yet, I'll tilt down to it here in a second, has been in building a um, hot wire table. I used to, way back when, was heavy into airplanes and built quite a few of these. In fact, the ones I built back then were rather big, where you're talking about cutting four foot wide pieces. Doing something like that doesn't really work for miniature wargaming. There's no need for anything that big. So what I did is I did a scaled down version of it um, that should be a little easier for other people to build. Um, incorporates a lot of features that I like in it and that it makes a few things easier. Um, you can get the handheld wands and I've got one floating around here somewhere. I think I've got a Woodland Scenics one and then I've got you know the little pointy stick wands as well. Um, they work nice but when you want to do fairly accurate cuts or get into some repeatable cuts like say for example you're making hills and you want to have a consistent angle on them or one of the pieces I'm working on is going to be some Jersey barriers where they have a consistent angle. Trying to do that kind of thing with a freehand tool just doesn't work. So going to a table is what's going to give you kind of the, the best options on it. So I'm going to set this thing and find a spot on the bench. I set that in. Um, the, there have been a few videos put up recently of people making them and I love their videos and they did a great job with them. Um, this is kind of more my technique of doing them as opposed to following theirs. There are a few things that they did in those that I'm not a big fan of. Um, it's not that they don't work. It's, it's there are a few minor things that make it a little bit more dangerous than what I would like to see. Um, for example, the power supply. The most popular power supply that people have been using have been um, car battery chargers, which work great. Um, they give you plenty of adjustability so that you don't worry about you know like overheating the wire and those sorts of things. The one problem with them is they are capable of putting out some serious amounts of current. Um, for cutting foam you don't need that much and they can be a little bit expensive and they're a little bit clunkier to use. Um, with this one I went with something that's a little bit easier, a little bit smaller, um, that should should appeal to a few more people who get a little squeamish when you say, you know, like car battery charger. The other thing that I did differently in mine was I used nichrome wire. Um, we all hear about nichrome wire, it, you know, you can get it, it's like Woodland Scenics is who I got the wire that's in this one is from. Let's try and get this so it's in focus, there we go. Um, it was like two bucks for four feet. The advantage of using nichrome, nichrome wire is it heats up consistently. Um, you don't worry about, over time, it getting weird on you or snapping if you put too much current through it. Um, guitar string works. Um, other copper and, you know, like metal wires and welding wires work. This stuff, though, really does work better. I mean, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to give you a specific amount of resistance per foot, and that's what's going to generate your heat, and that's what's going to give you the effect that you're looking for in it. You can also get it, I mean, I've gotten some thicker stuff here. Which, I'm going to pull this one out. I mean, it also comes in, you know, like thick, thicker ones, which what's nice about that is you can actually shape it. So it's like, say, for example, I wanted to, I don't know, do a piece that was with that profile. I could actually shape it and get that profile. Um, I think this this little bit of it cost me, like, two bucks at Micromart. And I'm going to pause here for a second because, of course, phone rings. So I'll be right back.